re zero bro okay so i want to talk about where i'm at i am still not done with season two right now i'm not even gonna lie y'all can get mad y'all might be like oh we expected you to, to keep up we expected you to be caught up by now like look bro i'm midway through season two if y'all remember my first video on re-zero i wasn't done with it i wasn't even done with like the first like 10 episodes i was on like episode eight or something but now i'm way fur further and i want to tell y'all like is he like like i thought it was heat before i thought subaru went through some struggling struggling i didn't even really know the extent of his struggle i've literally seen this man go through so many mental breakdowns that everything that i said in that first video validates itself like 10 times over maybe more than a hundred times over we i've seen this man get eaten by rabbits i'm probably rolling some clips right now he, bro got eaten by rabbits um bros watched his well i was gonna say his girl but really his side chick die multiple times trying to save him as well as his main chick die multiple times as well as getting decapitated by someone that he thought was his friend or really amelia's like apparently dad uh, also yeah do not watch this if you want spoilers like that is your fault buddy but anyways Someone that is apparently her dad. Uh, I don't know that much about, about it yet, if Puck's actually her dad or not, but her spirit killed him. He's basically been getting killed by any and everything. And we watched this man literally go into a breakdown to the point where the only person that could help him was, was, was Rim, bro. Was Rim. This is why Rim is best girl. Rim like, was talking to him like, don't give up, don't give up. Like, And then she was even like, she doesn't know that he can die, but she was like, look, I don't know. There's something that you can't tell me, but I, I'm here for you. I am here for you. Like, and she kept saying that to the point where he, he got his life together, bro, woke up. And then he was like, okay, let's go kill the white whale. Let's like, bro, why isn't that your girl, bro? Forget Amelia. Like Amelia is cool, but Bro, I hate this first girl trope, bro. It's so annoying. I'm tired of it, bro. Like, ooh, it makes me mad. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Like that trope in like romance animes and stuff like that, where it's like the first girl that the main character meets is always who he ends up with. Or if it's not like that, like say it's like a battle anime or something like Naruto or something, it's never who the dude likes. Because, for example, Naruto, which I'm actually glad he ended up with Hinata. I'm just using this as an example because I can't really, like, think of anything else. But Naruto wanted Sakura, and he didn't get her. But Hinata wanted him, and they ended up together. Like, and there's a lot of animes where this dynamic is the same. It's either the first girl that they meet, that's who they end up with, or it's whoever wants the, the dude. It's never who the dude wants. It pisses me off. Because Rim is clearly the best option. I'm just saying. Y'all can hate. I don't care. I do not care. Anyways, bro. It is getting so good. A few highlights I want to talk about is the White Well fight. Everyone banded together to fight the White Well. It was amazing. There was a lot of, like, death and just crazy stuff. Like, this... I can't really remember his name off the top of my head. But the butler guy, bro. He was boxing. Like... He had a wife, if I can remember, that was a sword master that got killed by the White Well. And apparently the White Well is one of three monsters that were made by the Witch of Gluttony, I'm pretty sure. And she made them basically saying something like, everyone's gotta eat. That was her, re everybody's gotta eat. Everybody's gotta eat, really. The three monsters, or the three uh, great you know what I mean? The three basically big bads of the whole show. White Whale, which Subaru took down. The Rabbits, which... <sighs> poor Subaru, bro. And apparently the Black Serpent. And I haven't seen the Black Serpent yet, but I don't know why Subaru didn't ask questions about that. Because that's definitely going to come into play way later, I'm pretty sure. I can already see y'all typing in the comments now. The Black Serpent's crazy. Oh my god. I really messed with this green girl. She helped Subaru whenever Subaru was like arguing with Amelia and they had their little falling out. And that little art, like that helped a lot for Subaru's character development. Like, cause he was really ready to give up. He was ready to run away. And like I said, bro, it took Rim to really 
shake him back and for him to realize, look, I can do this, bro. I'm the only one that can save my friends. I've seen my friends die countless times and I am the only one that can really make it right. Like I have to do this. I have to stop bitching and do it. You got all this like princess royal selection going on and stuff like that. Got my girl felt in a dress now? Like what? Brain is not working. I can't remember no names right now. I can just remember like what they did, but I remember this purple guy right here and him and Subaru had like their little fight in the Coliseum, I think it was. Bro got beat black and blue. Like <laughs> bro got beat up so bad by him, but they end up rekindling and taking down the witch cult. And I guess that should be my next topic. So apparently Subaru is someone named Pride from the witch cult. And I don't know if they're just yapping or what, or if he's actually like a part of the witch's cult or pride. But I mean, it would kind of make sense because the witch of envy, which is the witch that gave Subaru his powers, we found out, seems to take a liking to him, bro. Like she was over here hugging on him and stuff. I was like, what? In fact, that's actually the last episode I watched whenever the witch was like hugging on him, saying I love you and stuff like, bro, get off of him, bro. What are you doing? The point I left off, it just keeps getting better, bro. Like it just keeps getting better. It like literally, like I haven't watched something in so long that makes me uncomfortable though. And I low key love it. Like it feels, it's weird to say it like that. Like I might be like, what are you talking about? But it's like, normally I self insert myself into a character's shoes. Whenever I'm reading something, playing a video game, it doesn't matter what it is. I, I always act like I'm that character, but it's like Subaru has been through so much anguish and pain to the point where when I watch it now, I can't say that it's me, bro. I'm like, this is Subaru's pain, if you know what I mean. This is what he has gone through. And it's like, there's not many stories that can make me feel like that to where I can just detach from it because it makes me that uncomfortable but at the same time even though it makes me uncomfortable i'm still saying it's really good like seeing his character development but also seeing that in all the stuff he's going through he's still human doesn't matter how many crazy fights he's been in how many crazy beasts he runs from or him actually helping and killing the white whale it doesn't matter amongst all these crazy people that live in the world of what was it called leonia or so lagona i don't know <laughs> y'all know what i'm trying to say but amidst all of that he's just a human and not only that he's just one man that's trying to basically fight the world to be honest because he can't explain what's going on and he can't explain to people how he knows what's going on he just has to face it and he has to use what he learned from previous loops to help him in the current loop and that just gets me addicted because i'm just like well that just happened i'm like well and you would think the solution would be clear it's like well obviously you need to do if plan a didn't work right here then plan b will definitely work then he goes to do plan b and then that doesn't work because something from plan a came back into play but in a different way and then it's like some characters don't act the same. Like one character I want to talk to y'all about uh, is Garfield. I'm in an area right now where they had went through the barrier or whatever to this land. And this land is only for like half bloods. It started, it's like basically the start of season two because season one ends with them finally beating the witch cultist Bill Glues or something. I forgot, I'm forgetting so many names. I know exactly like what I'm talking about and what these people look like. I just forgot all the names, but I'm sorry y'all. After feuding with Amelia, he finally saves her and stuff like that. And pretty much, he's saying he's trying to smash. I ain't even gonna lie, she was smiling. He basically told him not right now, one day, but not right now. And he's like, bet, whenever. Season two starts with me being actually pissed we found out that Rim is bedridden and no one remembers her because she was like, had her soul eaten or something crazy by some weird looking thing. Nobody remembers her, not even her own sister, Rom. And I'm just like, bro, come on, bro. Like they're always doing Rim dirty. Like there's so many loops where she's died or sacrificed herself. And even now in the one where she's alive, no one remembers her. She can't catch a break, bro. She cannot catch a break, bro. And literally, I think that's also one of the only characters in the show where I'm literally ready to just launch my phone across the room. Like, cause Rim like is so like kind and especially to the our main character Subaru, bro. 
but it's just like she's always getting put on a back burner bro for like amelia or like just something that just happens and she throws herself at the danger and then always gets folded bro like she does her best like in the white well she was boxing the white well too but bro like i don't know she just don't deserve half the stuff that happens to her bro the crazy part is i think i said in part one that i actually liked rom more than i did rim but uh the show kind of forces you to like rim after all the stuff that happens probably my favorite girl in anime i'm not even gonna lie i don't even care for many of them back to what i was saying so after all that's going on finally they come up to the camp which is like a half blood camp full of like elf people and like all types of different race people and those are the only people that can go through the barrier. They're trying to get someone to pass through this trial. Millie is a candidate for it. I forgot exactly why she, she could pass the, the trial or whatever, but she has the capability. Apparently, if they do this passage or this trial, it'll lift the barrier and all the half-blood people will be free. Later in season two, we meet a very important character. I thought I could remember her name at least, bro. It's the Witch of Greed, though. I do know her title. She basically gives Subaru the right to pass the trials or whatever, to also qualify for them. And I haven't gotten to the portion where he actually has gone through them. He's went through the first one. And man, when he went through the first trial and actually we learned the truth about his parents and how he left home and stuff like that, how he was basically being lazy. But his parents, like they knew, you know, something was up with him and they didn't really give him a hard time. Like, and he says that in his memories a lot. He's like, I, I wanted them to give me a hard time. I wanted them to actually rebuke me for what I was doing, but they never really did. And then they were like, man, I understand and stuff like that. He was just apologizing. I, like that was sad, bro. But the moral of it was just kind of like them being like, look, we're your mom and your dad, bro. We know you better than anybody. We know these struggles, man. We know your struggles and what you're going through. Don't think we're not paying attention to you. I, like even a message so simple, like hit me right here. Like, you know what I mean? Like that put me in my feels, man. But I know I'm like all over the place, but now we can get to the moment I was talking about like a couple of minutes ago that I kind of forgot about. I was bringing up Garfield, which is a character that is related to this maid right here. And every loop, this man has acted different, bro. Some loops, he seems to want to help Subaru. and other loops, he wants to imprison him and kill Otto. Like, bro, Otto is the homie, bro. But Otto always gets the, like, short end of the stick in every loop. Like, I remember when Subaru was going through his mental breakdown phase, bro literally socked him and he was trying to help him. I was like, bro, come on. And then we see Otto get sliced in fucking half in half bro he got fatality i'm not gonna lie to y'all i would never speak to garfield again i just remembered something the only reason why subaru got eaten by those rabbits is because garfield locked him up bro garfield you were on fraud watch i would never speak to this nigga again i swear on my life bro. overall man <laughs> i can't wait to keep watching more and see subaru's character development he still has a little bit of ways to go though like i remember that's her name okay i remember echidna that's the that she has a cool name i like that name but i remember when she literally was like yo subaru don't talk to these witches like like you can talk to them no she said she said she you can talk to them you know what i mean but like don't look them in the eye don't touch them they are dangerous bro the first thing that he does whenever she switches is touch this witch and he gets his arm taken off his leg taken off i'm like bro you were so stupid like he needs to like ooh, love bro but sometimes y'all cannot lie he is an idiot and what i like about season two is shoot he's not simping no more but yeah he might say some corny stuff here and there but he ain't like all like on it you know what i mean i remember like, bro, in my last video, y'all were trying to defend this man. They're like, writing paragraphs like, it's just a part of his personality. Like, that's the point. Simping is a part of his personality. That's not supposed to be a good thing. I know, all anime characters be simping at one point in the story. That's not even my problem. My problem was just like, whenever he would just randomly like, see all them people die and stuff like that. And then in the next loop, he'd be walking up to Amelia like, yeah, I like your cute eyes and your cute nose. I was like, bro, what? Now, like, he's really traumatized now because he don't even be doing none of that no more. He like, I ain't got time to joke. Like, he jokes sometimes, but it's, it's like way more genuine. You know what I mean? 
like it doesn't feel like it's directed towards the viewer like because whenever he used to stay st say stuff like that it didn't really seem like it was in the story it seemed like they were just adding stuff like that in there to just try to make us laugh or like it was directed towards us instead of it being in the show if that makes any sense to y'all bro has really made progression i'm i love it my favorite moment so far the whole white whale segment what i said because we got to watch Subaru literally have a just emotional breakdown to the point where he could not talk. Like, bro literally just couldn't talk anymore. He went from that much of a distraught mental state to fighting the white whale, as well as saving the girl he loves. The second half of season one was great. Season two is really cool. I really like how he was able to tell Echidna that he can return by death. And just seeing all the weight, like it's literally like we could see the weight lift off of him. Like he was so happy he was able to tell someone and I couldn't help but shed a tear, bro. Cause I was so happy for him, bro. I was like, yo, like if if that was me, bro, I'd be on the floor crying, bro. Like Akinna is a W, I'm not gonna lie for sitting there listening to him. I'm really ready to see how this stuff unfolds and how they're gonna be able to finally get out of the, uh, what is it called? The half blood forest or something like that because there are some loops where I was like, how is he gonna get out of it? Especially the white well loop. I was like, yo, cause bro went through so much shit trying to get out of the witch cultist and all of that. Like it, that was horrible. Like the end of season one, bro, I was like, how is he gonna like, we seen bro get, y'all remember when he got chained up to that wall? Like I'm just sitting here talking to y'all remembering even more stuff that he went through. Like bro, heck no. Nah. Hey. I'm gonna catch up. It's a little, little all over the place, but y'all get the gist. I'm very satisfied with our boy Subaru, bro. ReZero is fire, man. And I'm gonna catch up, give y'all an update, and then we wait for season three. Hit the like button, and I will come back with some more. Thanks for tuning in, man. Peace.